Arnold Horshack turned 43 years old Wednesday. <laughs> if that doesn't make you feel old, then perhaps the notion that there's some nostalgic aspect to the Jose Canseco Mark McGuire reunion in Oakland will. The term Bash Brothers is 10 years old. It was one decade ago that McGuire followed up Canseco's Rookie of the Year season with one of his own. Next thing you're going to tell me, John Travolta is a big movie star or something. Here's Dave Campbell. Mark McGuire, six foot five, two hundred and forty-five pounds. Jose Canseco, six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. Two of the most powerful men in the game. And now he just pounds one to left field. That is in the fifth deck. They've hit 657 home runs between them and were teammates for five and a half years. They were the Bash Brothers. They popularized the forearm shiver as a way of celebrating their prodigious blast. But both McGuire and Conseco feel the moniker of the Bash Brothers is now passe. I think Bash Brothers is something of your past. Kind of old, kind of stale. No, we never really came up with the Bash Bros to, to begin with in the sense of the, the, the name. I mean, we just bashed forearms all of a sudden in the media. Hey, look, the Bash Brothers not exploded from there. As far as the Bash Brothers, I think uh, we'll start something new. So if people out there want to have a new name for us, it's all for, I, I'm not for it. These Bayside Bashers will start anew with many differences from the Bash Brother day. They're both in their 30s now, and the years have taken their toll. The two towers of power have been riddled with injuries during their days apart. In fact, they've only played the same day 292 times over the past five seasons. McGuire has missed 47% of the A's games over the last four years, while Conseco has averaged just 92 games a year over the same span. I think that's number one goal for myself, staying in the lineup. I know that if I get 150 games under my belt in one year, I'm going to put up some devastating numbers. McGuire's numbers have been awesome despite the injury. He hammered 52 home runs last year in just 130 games, and his ratio of home runs per at bat was the best in baseball history. It was also enough to earn the admiration of Conseco, who has predicted a 60 home run season in his teammates' future. I mean, it's just incre incredible. I mean, his, his home runs per at bat are just devastating. Uh, I, for myself, the last two or three years, I consider Max the uh, best power hitter in baseball that there is now and has ever been. I mean, that's, that, that's saying a lot. You're talking about Maris and Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. And, uh, Mac is that type of player. Such high praise is telling. Not just of McGuire's ability, but also how things change. Now his teammates, Conseco and McGuire, are closer than ever before. When we first played together, um, I never really knew him. You know, he was a type of player that didn't allow anybody to get to know him. When I first started out, uh, you know, that time quiet and shy, and I guess that was taken as being arrogant and, and, and aloof. Since he's gone through a lot of things uh, in his life, um, uh, he's come back to the A's. He's, he's totally different. He's much more approachable. He likes to have fun with the young kids. And uh, I see a much uh, nicer and uh, fun-loving guy. Okay, back. Swung on, belted to left, way back. How far will it go? Oh, it almost hit the scoreboard and left. Up Jacobs Field measured at 485 feet. Especially where he hit in left center, that's at least 550. I mean, that's, I don't know who the, I'd call him an idiot if he was here. The idiot who said it was only, I mean, that's, that, that's taking a lot away from that. You see, Cal Aldridge has allowed three homers this year. Bottom of the third, one nothing A's. We say this for a reason. Jose Canseco makes it four. Allowed by Cal Aldridge this season, two nothing A's. The next batter. Mark McGuire, you got it. 410 feet away to center field. That makes it five homers allowed by Aldridge this year. Three nothing A's. In the next inning, Matt Stead. He swings hard early in the count. Make it six on the season. That thing was hanging. Five nothing A's, a two-run shot. The very next batter, Jose Canseco. Back-to-back -back jobbies, you bet. See ya. Gone. Eldred allowed four homers in this game, one more than he allowed all year up to this point. Six nothing A's at that point. The A's go on to win, seven to four. So Canseco and Stairs each homered, while Canseco and McGuire go back to back yard for the tenth time in their careers. McGuire's 13th homer of the year snapped a 25 at bat homerless streak that was his longest such drought since '94. Ariel Prieto 
With the win, he allowed two runs and six hits before leaving after six and a third innings with mild back spasms. Season high eight. The A's just 11 and 20 on the road visiting Toronto. A's down 3 1, two men on for that man. Jose Canseco against Pat Henkin. And Jose is sky dancing. His 12th of the year, and the A's would be up by one, 4 3. Same score, bottom nine, Orlando Merced facing Mike Moeller. Merced, the fly, Jason McDonald. It is his first major league game, so we're going to give him some slack. Now that is a highlight. Can we take another look? We want to give him enough vision. It is his first major league game, and he does a wonderful juggling act. And I think that will make nightlights on the 6.30 Eastern Edition tomorrow. That is four straight losses now for Toronto. As for Jose's game-winning home run, it was the 32nd home run in his career against the Blue Jays. That matches his highest total against any team. Canseco also has 32 dingers against the Yankees. Oh, by the way, speaking of the Yanks, the New York Post reports the Yanks are looking into the availability of Joe Carter. The Yanks are desperate for right. You can see by Tewksbury's reaction, he's kind of following the ball. Here is Jose Canseco. A single in the first, he got as far as second base. The A's reacquiring Canseco from the Boston Red Sox. John Wasden going to the Red Sox. And Canseco, after having been a designated hitter for so many years, is seeing more action in the outfield tonight. His 27th game in the outfield. Now, David, I know you spent uh, the latter end of your career as a DH, and I'm not sure how much going back and forth you did toward the end. Not much when you were a twin, I know. Not much. Uh, it's got to be hard on him because you just prepare for a game totally different as a DH as you do as an outfielder. You've got to get the feel of uh, chasing the ball and the, the terrain out there. I, I don't know how he's done this year, but I know it's got to be difficult, to, certainly the first half of the season. Well, he's hit the home run. He's got 10 home runs, 31 RBIs, but the average at 250. Two strikes to Conseco. And a delay called by Derwood Merrill, and Conseco is rung up. That's why a catcher will hold it, as Steinbach did there. Well, in his first at bat, His first at bat, Jose Canseco looked back at Derwood Merrill about a fastball in. And Art Howe, of course, has to be careful, or he'll be the next to go. The umpires have gotten their fuses a little bit too short. Used to be able to argue a little bit about those without getting thrown out. It seemed to be a little uncalled for. I, would, I was just going to say, people really like to come to a game to see Jose Canseco play and participate. And you just don't throw guys out. Yeah, like he's, he's one of the stars of the game, and you sure don't. Well, he hit his head there. <laughs> the A's are in somewhat of a dilemma. They lose their right fielder. Well, Tewksbury with good control, but he... I mean, as a pitcher, I would have liked that, but maybe a little bit low. You see Durwood really taking a little bit second to call that. And you saw Steinbach, as they say, frame it and hold it. A big strikeout of Conseco. He exits the game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Duck. 1 0 to Mark McGuire. McGuire singled in the first inning. A very high fly to deep center field. Darren Jackson looks up, and this one is long gone to center field. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. McGuire nearly equaling in height what he got in distance on that home run. His 16th of the year and it's three to nothing Oakland. I saw something where they said the average home run that he hit is averaging about 430 feet. And again it just watch this swing of Mark McGuire. Just a fastball middle of the plate a little away. Belt high. Last year he hit the longest home run 
hit in this ballpark to left field. That might be the longest home run hit here to center field. Billy Taylor facing Scott Cooper deep to right. Actually, it was 3 2 A's, and that tied the game at 3 3. Top 10. Game still tied. Jeff Montgomery facing Canseco. That's a double down the line. 5 3 A's. Bottom 10 A's up 8 6. Dave Johnson gets Jose Offerman looking to end it. Art Howe looking on for the A's first three game winning streak. Top of the second, nobody out. Mark McGuire at third. Jose Canseco takes a Will Canane pitch over the fence in center field and off the palm tree. His 14th. Yeah, 2 0 A's. Top of the third, 2 1 A's. Two outs and a runner on. The other Bash brother hits his 26th to get it within one of Griffey. It's 4 1 Athletics, but he missed the palm tree. Next hitter, Canseco. Crushes another one. His second of the game. The A's go up by a 5-1 to one count. Bottom of the sixth, 5-3 athletic. Steve Finley with the base hit to score Chris Jones and send Caminiti to third. 5-4 A's. Caminiti, though, pulls up at third lame. Has to leave the game with a mild strain of the hamstring. Top of the eighth. Game tied at eight. One on, two out. Jason McDonald. Ooh. His first major league home run off Trevor Hoffman, 10-8 athletic. And in the bottom of the ninth, the 11-9, the Padres load him up with two outs. Finley against Buddy Groom. The pop fly ends the game. The athletics win a wild one, 11-9 in San Diego. Canada allowed. I think it's going to be devastating. Um, if Mark McGuire is traded and he does break the home run record, uh, I think Mark is probably the biggest biggest thing that Oakland Ames has right now in the sense of uh, bringing fans out to the ballpark. I was there last year trying to chase what people are always trying to chase. Nobody came out to watch this last year. There are a lot of fans who would think 60 home runs notwithstanding, uh, we need to bring in some new talent into the organization in the way of prospects. Uh, others would say um, exactly the opposite. 4-1, he's out. Top six, McGuire, Willie Blair. He'd already canned him once earlier, and Mark McGuire going nowhere. Fast. Strike three at the knees. What's that Canseco move? Ball over the inside corner of the plate. Pull your legs back. Oh, he's gone. Jim Joyce would have none of it, and look out. For a guy that size, what do you need to throw bats and helmets for? Here comes Canseco. Dan Maselli, don't go there. I fly ball. A's trail 5-4. Thanks to the Canseco blast. Bottom nine, Todd Jones against Giambi. Tying run at the plate. Curveball. Up the middle, is it through? No. Tigers win it. 6-4. Blair the winner. 4-2 and in his second start since he comes back. close he went to three consecutive world series with the a's and after stops in boston and texas he's back in oakland former most valuable player jose canseco discusses reuniting with his bash brother after dealing with some bashing in beantown what does he think of the salaries given to barry bonds and albert bell are the a's moving closer or further from their world series days and is jose healthy enough to recapture that 40 40 season up close is up next from the ESPN studios in Los Angeles, here's Chris Myers. Hi, how you doing? And welcome to the show, and thanks for joining us. We welcome in from spring training in Arizona, five-time All-Star, now in his 13th Major League season, Jose Canseco. I almost, I almost forgot where you were, Jose. Nice to see you. How are you? Great to see you, Chris. All right, joining us from Phoenix. Now, uh, we always say, hey, how you feeling? But the last few seasons, you've been bothered by various injuries. You really haven't played more than 120 games in any of the past five seasons. So right now, how is your health? Actually, right now, as healthy as I've been in about uh, five years, to the truth. Uh, I had a ruptured disc last year in spring training. Um, was penciled in to play outfield, but really the ruptured disc did not allow me to do that. Uh, started out the season speaking with Kevin Kennedy, and basically we knew sooner or later uh, something would happen to that back, whether the slight rupture would totally explode in the back. Uh, we were just waiting for that day to come. Lucky enough, I was able to play probably to the All-Star break, put up some pretty good numbers. But uh, taking batting practice in Minnesota, swung at a pitch down and in, and uh, two discs ruptured back to the original and another one. Uh, so I had to get the operation. All right, so you are, you say, the healthiest maybe in, in five years. After spending eight years with the A's and then being away since 92, how eerie was it to put that uniform back on and report to the A's spring training site? Well, it wasn't really that bad considering 
uh, it's a whole new organization here, whole new environment. You're talking about up to, we have new owners, new management, new manager, new players. Um, I think the only one uh, out of the staff that's still here has, has been Sandy Alderson. Uh, the only player is Mark McGuire. So uh, to me, it's, an, uh, it's a new organization to tell the truth, even though there's still that uh, memory from the past and I, I try to keep them as positive memories. Yeah, and the fans keep that. Now, you, you got quite a, an ovation. They were really cheering even in spring training there when you uh, you stepped out onto the field and had a big game for them. How'd that feel? Yeah, it seems like I've gotten a, a lot of uh, fan support here. Uh, a lot of the fans are happy to see me back, happy to see me here, have spring training in Arizona, which I enjoyed here. The weather's great, even though the last three or four days have been extremely cold, but when it heats up, they're there's nowhere to have better spring training than here in Arizona. Uh, the fans have taken me in their arms again. Uh, seems like I got a lot of positive uh, PR in Oakland when they heard that, uh, that I re-signed with the Oakland A's. I know that the ticket sales went up and um, everything has been extremely positive for me. Yeah, and this, uh, in fact, the ticket sales, they sold more in, in one day than in any other single day in the last five years. Uh, and I know Mark McGuire was a little offended by that. It was like, hey, I've been here all this time and Jose's back. Um, I don't know if he was offended. I know, I know Mark's a gentleman. Uh, he's a very positive person. Um, I don't know really where that statement came from, but uh, I'm sure Mac's happy to see me back. I'm happy to come back here and play with Mike McGuire. Uh, you know, I've considered Mark the best power hitter in baseball, and he's shown that over the last two or three years. All right, now you spent the last two seasons in Boston, and when, when General Manager Dan Duquette fired manager Kevin Kennedy, uh, you wanted out in a hurry. Why? Well, it wasn't the fact that uh, he fired him in a sense if, he, if Kevin Kennedy had really deserved it but uh, the team started out sluggish uh, you know Kevin Kennedy pulled the team together and what people have to realize is that from the all-star break to the end of the season the Boston Red Sox had the best record in baseball so that just goes to tell a lot of what uh, Kevin Kennedy had had to put the team through uh, the change that he had to make and the other problem was that I was out of the lineup so that's really one less tool that he really has has to work with um yeah you know fired kevin kennedy uh fired carlucci frank white really couldn't get the appropriate raise that all the other coaches were actually getting with his time in so uh you know i, I think a lot of people a lot of players are very disappointed with dan duquette roger clemens wasn't given the opportunity to come back with the boston red sox he wasn't tendered a proper contract and you're talking about a person who is the Boston Red Sox, you're talking about Roger Clemens. I mean, he's done more for that organization than any other player. So uh, things were definitely just falling apart there. I know Mo, Mo Vaughn has been very disappointed for what has happened. And, uh, you know, he might be the next one to go. Yeah, and Mo Vaughn had indicated that, that he felt, hey, Dan Duquette shouldn't lie to people. Tell us if we're the Red Sox are rebuilding, say that, or if not, if we're competing. But people want to want to know the truth. Are they, what's your opinion? Are they rebuilding in Boston? Are they really contenders? You know, there's there's no way to tell. I don't think, uh, I, I think Dan Duquette has kept everyone in the dark about that. Um, I know that he doesn't communicate well with the players at all. Um, Did he lie to you at all, Jose, Dan Duquette? Um, I didn't really speak to him that much. I didn't really uh, communicate with him that much. Um, I, know, I, I just know that the incident, I've heard from other players the way he really was. And Kevin Kennedy was, was a player's manager. There's, there's no different buts about it. Um, I mean, the players respect him greatly. And for that to happen just disgusted a lot of people in Boston. Yeah, now you were friends and, and still are friends, good friends with the Kevin Kennedy going yes. back to your Texas days. Is that sometimes a bit of a, a strain when one's a manager and one's a player? Can you get too close? Um, I don't think you really can get too close because for a gentleman like, like Kevin, I mean, you want to play day in, day out. You want to play injured. Um, you want to give it your all. And I, I think the most important thing is that we had a very high respect level. No matter if I was Jose Canseco and made $5 million a year, I mean, the income didn't really matter to him. It was the person that really mattered. Um, he treated players as human beings, not as a commodity or, or not as a, 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 a tool or something. So it's, uh, it was very difficult to see him go. Yeah, and Kennedy, he did win a division title. And then you mentioned the, the, the best second half record. Uh, but Duquette said that Kennedy didn't have the team as prepared and didn't develop the young players enough and that was the reason he was, he was let go. Is any of that accurate or why do you think he was fired? Well I, I definitely know that Kevin Kenny was used as a scapegoat. Um, I, I know there were a few lies spread around around Kevin Kenny about uh, spring training, if, if the bus was on time, if he was on time. It was just ridiculous. Um, you know sometimes an organization needs a player or, or a coach or a manager as a scapegoat and I think Kevin was unfairly used. Now, and how would you personally sum up your, your two-year stay in Boston? 
I thought uh, the fans were great. Uh, the only problem I had was with, with was Dan Duquette, of course, the incident with Kevin Kenny. But I love the ballpark. I love the fans. The fans were very positive. The fans were always behind me 100. percent And uh, you know, it was a great time while I was there. All right, we'll continue talking with Jose Canseco. He's in Phoenix. We're in Los Angeles, and you know where you are, most of you. We'll talk about Jose's talk of returning to a 40-homer, 40 40-steal 40 season and about his return to the A's. Stay with us. I know you will. It's a ground ball to the right side, speared by Miller. We're back up close with Jose Canseco, who is back with the Oakland A's, a team he went to three straight World Series with to close out the 90s. And, and Jose, you beat the Giants in, in 89, but lost to the Dodgers and the Reds around that. We've kicked this around before. When you look back on it, especially now that you're back in, in the Bay Area with the, the, with the A's, why didn't that team win more World Series titles? I, I think we came upon a problem uh, against the Dodgers when we first came in. I think we took them for granted. Uh, we didn't really work as hard as, as we should have. I know we had a, a, a lapse there where we went on the division in four games straight. We had about five or six days of uh, waiting for the Dodgers to win that series, and we didn't take it serious. Uh, BP was just a shambles. We thought we were just going to roll over the Dodgers, and I think they really humbled us in that series. And then the Red Series, what happened in that one? Um, Red Series, I, I think they were just extremely tough. Uh, they, they pitched well. Our, our team was, was flat there also. And, uh, you know, there's an old saying, not, not the best team wins in a four, seven game series. It's the team they have plays the best, and we're just outplayed. Yeah, and much of the credit for the A's success through that stretch given to manager Tony La Russa, but how much of the blame do you think he deserves for, the, for this team not winning more World Series titles? I, I don't know if there's any individual you can blame. I, I'm sure it's, it's a team effort. Uh, you can't blame one manager. You can't blame one player. Uh, you know, for me, that's, that would be unfair to blame any individual. Uh, we go in it together. We either win as a team or, or, or lose as a team. And the A's have not finished above 500 since you left. They lost Terry Steinbach to free agency. How realistic, you know, you talked about the new scenery. How realistic are this team's chances of returning to the postseason? Well, I know offensively we have a very strong team. Uh, I mean, we're going to put up a lot of runs in, in, in a hurry. Uh, defensively, we're probably about average. Pitching-wise, I don't even know who our five starters are, are going to be. I, I think in baseball, no matter how much offense you have, you're going to have to have some pitching. Yeah, and uh, right, Art Howell probably doesn't know whether, <laughs> who the five starters are either yet at this point. But clear this up for us. You've only made 12 outfield starts, I think, in the past three seasons. How many games do you think you're, you're going to get to play in the outfield this year? And is that an important issue to you as opposed to being the DH? Well, I think it's an important issue to use my, my whole ability. Um, I've obviously had great speed and a, and a, and a, and a very strong arm. Um, last year, I couldn't play outfield because I had the rupture just the whole season. It was uh, very painful for me to stand out there inning after inning. Uh, after the surgery, I've been feeling 100%. My back feels great. Uh, first time I played outfield today, got a good jump on a ball, made a good play. I felt excellent out, out, out there, so it's looking very positive for me. How is the mindset different when you're a DH versus a, a position player? I think basically your main concern is between that bats is keeping your body warm, keeping your legs warm. Uh, you get a lot more time to think about what pitches you may have fouled back or what pitch you may have hit. I think you get a lot more time to go in and watch videos. I am one of these big uh, video techs that likes to go in and analyze certain videos, analyze swings, analyze uh, weight transformation angles. You so like I to, tend to do that. You also like to look at those towering home runs you hit, don't you? <laughs> you? Well, yeah, you want to see more of, uh, more of the positive things that, that, that actually happen. I know you've always told me that you're an entertainer as well as a baseball player, but did your commitment to the game ever, ever waver uh, through your career where maybe it, it got to the point where, you know, you talked about like in the World Series taking things for granted, where, where it, it held your career back a little bit as you reflect back on it? Um, I don't know. I, I think, you know, injuries have hurt me a lot. I've kept me out. I've maybe uh, not let me focus as much as I wanted to, but I've always been an intense player. When I'm out there, I'm, I'm, I'm in a lineup. I'm very intense. I'm very much into the game. I'm a hard player. I take aggressive swings. I, I like to slide aggressively. So 
Uh, as long as I'm in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna play hard. Yeah, because obviously conditioning can be part of that. You, you did have a fast start in your career, branded a future Hall of Famer. Uh, 13 years later now, how realistic do you think Jose Canseco in the Hall of Fame is? Um, I think I'm going to have to show a lot more consistency. I think I'm going to have to stay off the DL. Um, I definitely have the ability. I've, I've got the work habits. Um, I've got the experience now being 12, 12 years in the, in the major league level. I think I, I just have to put it together more. I just have to play in day in, day out, stay healthy, put up those numbers. And really not just one year. It's going to have to take two, three, four, five years to do that. And you were the first player to steal more than 40 bases, hit more than 40 homers in the, in the same season. 88, you were the, the AL MVP. Is that something that you can, well, you think you could realistically accomplish now at age 32? Oh, definitely. Uh, my, my legs are in great shape. I don't think I, I've, I've, I've lost a step. Um, i like to do that again this year if I can stay healthy. I don't know if Art Howe would want me to run because I'm hitting in front of Mark McGuire. So I guess we're going to have to talk about that. We're going to have to talk about how aggressive he wants to be on the base path, if he's going to give me the green light. And, uh, you know, obviously Mark's a big power hitter. He's the most consistent power hitter in baseball right now. So I'm sure he wouldn't like me to get thrown out of second or third base. <laughs> no, not, not with him. So, so if you're healthy, I mean, we, we'll figure what, how many games you figure you're going to play in this year? I like to play uh, at least 150 games. And how many of those would you guess are going to be in the outfield? Uh, as much as possible, to tell you the truth. It's going to be up to the organization to... Uh, for, for, for them to decide if uh, you know Jose's going to play outfield day and day out. But I've already acknowledged to that that I'm extremely healthy. And, the, and where you hit in the batting order, obviously in front of McGuire in the three spot, is that are you comfortable with that? I'm very comfortable with that. I, I, I think it's going to help me a lot. Uh, you know, Mark having that uh, high at bat for home run ratio, having that uh, high on base percentage, having a great up to the plate, that can do nothing but, but benefit me. All right, we're talking with Jose Canseco in Phoenix. He's at spring training with the A's. Later, his thoughts on reuniting with Bash brother Mark McGuire and the salaries being paid to Barry Bonds and Albert Bell. One more in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're up close talking with Jose Canseco, back with the Oakland A's. Technically, he's back in Phoenix and uh, back with a new member of the family. You surprised me with this, Jose. This is your new uh, your new child. Right. My new daughter, Josie, she wants to say hi to Chris Byers. All right, say hey, hi, Josie. She's a hey, big jo fan of yours. A bit, well, she, right. Just have her fill out that <laughs> Nielsen rating booklet. Uh, yeah, yeah, congratulations. Is and uh, how old is, is your daughter? She's four months old. Four months old. Yeah. All right. And how, right, make sure that they're very careful with that. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't draw, don't error here. No. Uh, how, how has being a father affected you? I tell you, it's, it's very exciting. It's very hard to explain it unless you've actually uh, had a child. And, uh, you know, it's a very humbling experience. It's very exciting. I was there in the actual hospital when my wife had, had the child. And I'll tell you, it's the most incredible thing. It's, it's so hard to explain unless you've actually gone through it. It's a great. Now, Mark McGuire has said that you are a changed man since you <laughs> married and, and, and your first child. Do you agree with that? Um, I, I guess I'm a lot more experienced. Um, you know, I've gone through a few things in my life, whether it was a prior marriage or speeding tickets or, or, or run-ins with, with the law. I guess, uh, I, guess I, I kind of uh, think more before I actually react or, or, or get involved with certain issues. So. You, know, you didn't do that before. <laughs> well, I was a lot, a lot younger, and uh, you know things didn't happen the way I expected them to. Right, now, how much do you actually get it? But do you change a, a diaper and that type of thing, or have you gotten that involved yet? Well, the, the, as far as I've gotten so far is feeding her. So, um, if I would have to change a diaper, I would. All right, because yeah, a real man. I mean, if you're going to be a real man, Jose, you got to change a diaper. <laughs> got to change a diaper. Yeah, that's where it goes. All right, is it true that when you first met your wife in Ohio, that the only way she knew you was from playing uh, Sega baseball with her, with her brother? Yeah, uh, something involved, something like that. I met her in a, a restaurant, and, you know, I saw her, and I saw she was uh, really pretty, and we started talking, and, you know, we just hit it off. We started dating, and we ended up getting married. All right, well, she never, well, just like that. Cause you, just know, like that, simple. I, I know you've never had trouble uh, with women, even going back to those those Madonna days, but did, I heard that her friends warned her about you, said, hey, he could be a bad seed, so be careful. How did you change that, that image in her eyes? Yeah, her, her friend said, be careful, you know, he's a baseball player, he's got this history, he's dated Madonna and so forth, but uh, I guess we spent time together and she really saw how I, how I actually was as, as, as a person and really threw all those stereotypes aside. All right, so you seem very much at peace with what, the way things are going in your life now, so it's kind of it's kind of ironic you come back to Oakland where it all began for you and your personal life seems to be in order. What, what kind of goals do you have now for your baseball career? I think the number one goal for me is I got to concentrate day in, day out of just staying healthy, just staying in the lineup. Uh, I know with my ability, my work habits, I, uh, I'm going to put up some, some very good numbers. If I stay healthy, play 150 some odd games, if I'm giving you a green light, uh, you know, depending on what Art Howe wants to do, 
I think I could accomplish the 40-40 again. And you talk about your numbers. You've been reunited with Mark McGuire. Now, when you played together for seven years, when you two were together, he averaged 37 homers, 101 runs batted in. You averaged 38 homers and 118 RBI. I know you were both a little bit younger then, but what kind of numbers? I mean, when you talk about the two of you being together, what does that do for you and what does it do for him in, in terms of the kind of numbers you can put up? Well, I mentioned the possibility of us, if we can both stay healthy, play at least 150 games each, and we're looking at 9,200 home runs. Uh, when I said that, someone in the media says, wow, that's a lot of home runs. But if you calculate last year, I had 330 at-bats, and McGuire missed a month out of the season, and we still combined for around 80 home runs. That's just astonishing. And, and power, you two, will, you like swinging for the fences. I mean, that's, the, that's what you live for. Well, I, I don't know if it's swinging for the fences. I think we're big, strong, aggressive hitters. Uh, and we make contact, definitely things happen.